there's some people talking downstairs, so we're going to quickly listen in if we can hear any gossip. Wow. Hello, and welcome to a new video. I am invariably your host, Daniel McKeown, and I'm back in a new flat uh, from the last video. Um, it's a lot less green and warm looking, but it is certainly mine. Um, and uh, my wife's. <laughs> what a weird intro. Um, but yes, we, uh, we are back with another video. And um, we're in the fallow period before New, uh, new Year starts. So I figured it was just about the right time to get in another uh, yearly music video look back. If you watched the last video, you'll know that I don't really back myself on doing lists that are like objectively true or whatever. Um, and so for, uh, for a sort of year in reflection on, on music that we've all listened to, I figured I would just lead it more with like my top 10, maybe nine, new discoveries of this year. Some ground rules for all the time cops out there who I know are lurking in the comments of this video. Uh, these are new discoveries to me, so they may flare around from across time. I know it's gonna feel like really silly if I'm just like, oh, and Billie Holiday is a new discovery for me. So I think the first of the favorite new discoveries from this year was the rapper Dochi, who I just uh, think is so amazing, and it was one of those things where, um, I mean, I think everyone loves her now, like, she really just, like, blew up when, like, supersonic, but, like, I noticed it where I, after every monthly playlist, she would appear in, like, four different chunks of my, I think March and February was when I first started listening, um, and it's just so infectious and so unique, and I just love her lyricism, I love, like, how I think I've said this before about like Flo Millie or something, but in in a genre which feels very saturated, which is like very sort of dynamic, <laughs> girl rap I guess is a really horrible way of putting that. But like I guess like um, kind of rap pop or, or you know more 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 mainstream rap I suppose in that vicinity. If it was like someone who had this incredible flow and was also just very unique in her phraseology and in her like. Um, dynamism and how she did stuff as well as just having these crazy bangers like yucky blucky fruitcake is such a nut song and to have such a beat switch and to have such a sort of frankly quite audacious like intro for me of just being like yeah i'm doing all this and this and this and not knowing anyone uh not knowing her stuff before and having it just like leap into it and then going on to like um um, what it is like was such a another leap in a totally different direction like to make this like really authentic sounding 90s R&B ballad really just just to have such it was kind of just this flagrant disregard for for anything that had come before in this really infectious and cool way and I just loved um I just love listening to it and I think it just puts such a pep in your stuff it makes you it just it works as far as like the the literal I feel like it's like that thing of um, neurotypical people's relationship to music of just like, oh, I just feel better now. The voices have stopped. I very much feel that with, with Dochi and like, I think you can just get, you can just bang through some errands listening to Dochi. My God, that is house cleaning music. It's like, it's almost like she's just shifting gears, but doing these huge leaps in, in genre and styling at the same time that are just amazing. Um, and I, I think like she is easily amping up to, to, to one of my favorite rappers, I think. So yeah, Dochi, I'm trying, <laughs> I'm getting so distracted by my hair. Whenever I wear a hat, there's like, cause I'm wearing it cause I'm having a bad hat day, but I can see just the greasy tendrils, like a really unwashed Superman. Spin around and try that one more time. Um, the next in uh, my new discoveries of the year was uh, Beth Orton. Um, although, I will always reject the term folktronica as um, un a godless word and a phrase that no one should be uttered. I think this really just was one of the more unique uh, uh, the deep cuts of that and has this kind of clanky, rumbling, cool... It's from the 90s, so, like, I feel like, you know, electronic folk now is used as this kind of um, sheen over it. I think that kind of Phoebe Bridges effect of, like, everything's very harnessed and, and s not supersonic, but, like kind of has this glossiness over it and lets everything kind of worm and flow and go up and stuff. But I, I just really like with Beth Orton, and I don't know if it's because of the time or just because of what they were messing around with, 
but like it lets it have this big rumbling like everything feels touched and sort of wooden <laughs> and ornate and a tiny bit baroque in a way that was really cool um and i i listened to uh trailer park and central reservation and and um i think it was uh one of those i think it was the remastered version with all these all these extras and all those weird like experimentations and deep dives they go on and i just really loved how it sort of grounded it is like a lot of the songs go at least for like four or five minutes and you really have to sort of sit in them in the way that you would with a folk song i really love it and i just think it really um it combined with she has this like style of singing which really just cuts through a lot of that stuff and you can imagine being placed in any kind of soundscape and i think that's probably true because in her she then released a new album this year which i didn't love a lot no disrespect to her i'm kind of glad she's still it's kind of like when you remember someone from like a tv show you used to watch and they're still getting work you know what i mean like you see one of those weed and actors and you're just like oh thank god they're still working it's tough that industry's tough so i'm pleased for her on that but it just lost some of the some of the magic i guess it was a bit like you know and like making magic fire the first time but now it's just like making a lighter like i feel like that's the, the difference and i just love how well it like sort of holds the tension of a song too you're just really in it and it sounds like i don't know if it was trip hop um on a side note i love how people who invented trip hop really hate the term trip hop that's one of my favorite things ever um but it feels like cut from the same cloth as far as blending stuff but with a slightly more dylan Esque approach and I just really liked it and I, I liked kind of ambling around and, and um, it just really holds your attention and I I, uh, I think that was really cool and I think it's really worth kind of just sinking into if you start with, with, with Trailer Park I think. I think the actual sentiments of the song are really sort of soft and, 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 and beautiful and sort of unflinching in the, the, the emotions they're trying to get across like they don't really pull any punches and I don't think she like it's just they're very well raw and very direct in that way that, that I think the really good folk is where it's, it feels very simple what they're trying to say but has a lot of depth under the under the spokes so uh, yeah Beth Orton I'll do a hat reveal I'll do a hat hair reveal at the end of this I reckon I will keeping um, with the 90s experimentation but in a sharp left in a different direction um, we have uh, Kitty Craft, our first character out of all these people I'm mentioning who has a mysterious, intriguing backstory, which us patrician lovers are absolutely about. Um, I've written some of it down, just so I know it's true. As the legend goes, uh, Kitty Craft was the project of uh, Pamela Valfa. Um, she, the album seemingly blew up in like 1998, apparently out of nowhere. Um, before just kind of vanishing into the ether again. I think there was like two releases and then what feels like the estate. Um, the one I was introduced to was Beats and Breaks from the Flower Patch, um, which is just a real, like, th there feels like it's just joy sewn into it. Like under the apple tree is this kind of, um, not bossa nova, what, what would you call it? Like, almost like, a, it's like a roided up, lounge jazz song kind of thing and it's like ding, and it kind of moves very um upbeat and very um just comforting to listen to as far as the story goes there's something very insightful and intriguing about like this idea of someone just making these songs and these very like plush new age sounding things just in their room alone so they existed you know with stuff like half court press which is also such a uh a, a lovely song and such a just kind of sketches out such a nice it feels like a bug snacks game that's really what it feels like it feels like this kind of video game in your own mind um that you kind of log on to and find and um wherever you are now pamela i hope you're doing well because uh, you brought a lot of um a lot of smiles <laughs> to my life it's, it's jay diller-esque in its sort of execution with a bit more it's like if she and her she and him did Jay Diller basically of, of this feels like a very modern thing and to have it so cleanly put together and cleanly expressed um just made just made it a lot of really really fun listening to I mean 
this is a, you, you get some serious bangers out of it too it just like as far as like I don't know where people stand on it but as far as like maximizing a sample goes and have it kind of break new ground and furrow new fields <laughs> You always know when I don't know what I'm talking about when the pretentious words come out, but it would just always kind of um, you're listening to any any given song of their of hers, and you know it kind of cuts and moves in different ways and finds these new um, these new frontiers of um, of expression, and I just really liked that. Just feels very like kind of like. You know when Snow White has got all her creatures and things helping her do chores? It feels a bit like that, but they're helping you craft a banger and be like a really cool dude. <laughs> That's how I'd describe Kitty Craft. Next up on our list of favourite new discoveries is only the band the Beatles could have been. Uh, it's Wings. Um, my friend... And fellow sappy bollocks Josh um, put me onto this. Josh Wright and check him out. He's also a musician. If I don't know, but he uh, he put me onto this, and I think it is really just like no one needs to hear me say this. But if you let Paul McCartney cook, he'll seriously cook. Like he is some of the most deft, playful, like simple pop jams I've ever heard in my life and like I really loved I think what was it the sample the set the what he said about the song um more stupid love songs like because everyone I think like John Lennon and stuff was like roasting him for only making very nice pop songs or nice love songs um and it's just and, and he was like oh what was what's wrong with that and I feel like that really gets that across where it's just like these incredible like it's like it's sort of, I want to say it's like dad rock or yacht rock, which is just this, when it's very, when things fall into place very simply and it's, it's, and these very infectious, but simple seeming perhaps, uh, bass lines and guitar riffs. Um, and again on, um, I think the extended one, I think it's called the planet or Venus and Mars. Sorry. Um, on Venus and Mars, you have, this you see how much experimentation and a bunch of jamming went into just finding these very core components um like i love is strange is easily one of the most um all encompassing songs like it's just really such a a simple everything there's there's it's like a perfect carbonara or fettuccine you know it's like everything is perfect on it it doesn't need there's just not an inch of fat on it and um, I just really loved that there was this, um, I think after I watched the Get Back documentary and you watch that and you feel Paul's pain of really trying to get the gang going and really trying to get the group project done when no one else is feeling it. And to let that kind of pure optimism, you know, just be run rampant is super lovely. Um, me and my wife went on a trip to um, Spain and then to a, a wedding in Lake Como and there was a ton of this music on this playlist I made for us and it was so idyllic just cycling through listening to listening to that and, and feeling so like... It does make you feel like you're in an advert, but an advert for the feeling that you want to feel, not the products, if that makes any sense. Um, it feels good, is what I'm trying to say. Um, and then Wings at the Speed of Sound as well. So there's just so much musicality in all of it. And I think he shows a real appreciation and, and love for, for all these different attributes of music making. Also, if you think he's like this simple, like, you know, wholesome dude, well, he suppose he still is. But you need to listen to the song She's My Baby. That is absolutely... He is crazy for that one. He's literally talking about... I don't want to ruin it. And obviously this happens a lot with pop songs. But it's a song that is about sex. But in some of the most... He, he describes his wife as like a kitten that also... That he mops her up like gravy. And it's just like, Paul, you dog! You... Wow! God damn you, man. That is you did gravy with the Linda McCartney sausages. We love to see it. It was just very, like, I, if you really put it down on paper, there's not a lot of people who could do that. And if we're talking about Beatle versus Beatle in terms of, like, who's the best one, John cannot do that, okay? John has, you know, I think if you watch the John and Yoko 
or in bed protests, war is over stuff. Like they seem like they don't, they seem very like weird clinical sex that they have. They're very like, that's the most you can do. He could not, he's not mopping her up like gravy. Just a really, <laughs> it's a bit of a mask off moment, but if the mask off is just like, yeah, I guess he's always like that. He's always just happy to be there in whatever scenario he finds himself in. It's, the, it's pitch perfect feel good music. And in a way that's really, you, you go into it thinking it would be cloying or, you know, uh, just hard to, where you're like, all right, it's a bit, bit, bit much, Paul. But like, it just really completely works and is very um, stripped down and good. And uh, thank you, Josh, for putting me onto them. The next artist is someone whose, I think, production and execution was just a completely next level experience for me. And really, like nothing else I listened to this year. There are also some, uh, somebody who came from, uh, a very the first probably modern artist we've actually had on this list, uh, but that and that is uh, Cara Jackson um, with her album um, "Why Does the Earth Give Us People to Love?" I think it's called. Um, it is just it. It truly sounds like she's got this kind of witchy swirling magic around her. She's like expressing these incredibly. Um, I think emotionally intelligent and specific experiences of, of, of things that have this kind of, she doesn't really spare herself in like, or how much her own involvement in what she feels is like how that affects things. And is very like almost wrong footing you as to what the emotion is. Cause it's about, you know, her like dickhead blues is about like, um, it starts as like, Oh, you know, I've just, uh, there's dickheads in my life bringing me down and, trying to involve themselves and it really just takes a lot out of me but then kind of goes on this journey to then take it where it's like that she's kind of left needing more or, or like hoping to find a, a different kind of uh, a spiritual benefit I guess from these fallouts you are kind of left trying to figure out where she's going and where she's coming from a bit. And it's this, it's, I just think it's such a, um, she has such this kind of magnetic, hypnotic singing voice, which is so, um, sort of authoritative. Again, like the witchiness where it's like, it sound, it feels like it's conjuring these things. And I think I feel that way as well, because the production that goes around it is also so, um, dynamic and again kind of clattering like it kind of feels like listening to the furniture and beauty and the beast dance around not like the actual songs but just like like they're moving in that kind of different way it completely zags on you like um like the song free for example like it literally feel you can feel her um her voice starts all low and there's this kind of almost like the wind powering behind her and again is about like how she is free and the kind of real um what's the word like real power and fear that comes to being actually free and like the control that you have that's kind of intimidating and it it's a six minute song and it builds and builds and builds and it's just this um very insightful way of working it's almost like it's got, I suppose that the history of would be kind of Fiona Apple style, um, like, and it happened, but with this, uh, like, grandiosity and kind of sprawling nature where what she's saying and her perspective on it is limited, but still kind of activating something greater. And I know, I know that's so pretentious, but like, it just takes you on this specific journey and this kind of, um, I think just in terms of, seeing song making song making and songwriting as like expression of a particular feeling but still seeing it contextually i just thought was a a, a remarkable feat and made it seem so effortless as well i mean this is a, a first long form album and i think it's just one of the, the best things i've ever heard and i just i am so excited to see what what comes next and if it's like a, a more codified version of what she's doing now or if it's a complete left field move uh, I, just, I just think it's all all par for the course and I'm excited for all of it so if, I mean ideally you should listen to it during a thunderstorm ideally um, but if you can't any other weather will do
The next band uh, I'm about to talk about was, I think, the most exciting and more, like, direct discoveries, um, which was uh, Future Islands, who I had, had not heard of until I uh, watched their performance of The King of Sweden on, uh, I think, The Late Show. Um, th- I have three things to say about this album, this band, and it's, like, you know, vocals, 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 and a fourth, vocals. I just think Samuel T. Herring's voice is is so unique and so particular and, like, sounds so... Um, I keep saying unique. You can pl- We can play a game of the unique counter down here. Um, but it, it's, it's just so striking and soulful, but kind of um, cold and removed. And he... He almost sounds like a like a, a guy from the Twilight Zone or something. I just think it's so, so it sounds so beautiful. And across on a few different um, songs too. I mean, famously on on Time Moves Slow, which I, makes me think he's some kind of like noir detective or something. And like uh, that. And then I always and I always thought that was great. I think when that came out, that was kind of I want to say unique at the time, or or maybe. Because they blew up, I think, in, like, 2015 with singles, which, by the way, is the best, my favourite album. I mean, Fall From Grace is such a crazy... Uh, speaking of vocals, sorry, Fall From Grace, he's, like, so controlled and measured and seems to have this real sort of tempered use of his vocals and the way he tries to get things across. And then to have it break through into this kind of screamo sound of Fall From Grace is so, so affecting. Um... And I just I just love listening to it um, again on another favorite album from this year, which was on the the Billy Woods Kenny Siegel album. Um, I could not believe how well used he was in that. I don't know why everyone from that world is not just using him on all for for all samples. I don't know like why he's not cashing check on check on check to to just come in and do to do a simple thing. Um, I, I, oh, on top of that, for the rest of the band, it's not just about Sam, uh, the, the, it's almost like this mechanized future of 80s synth pop that they like figured out the whole um, programming or structure of something to get it really um, far reaching. I mean, even on King of Sweden, the, the, it starts off so pounding and dynamic and like really gets you in from the get go. Like, and then just kind of drives up and up into this um, very euphoric sounding, exciting uh, prospect thing. Um, the City's Face, that was the other one I wanted to remember, which is about like, you know, f- falling out of love in the city because of your life changing and being unrecognizable and just ex- uh, imb- taking on a lot of her. I think is such a. Um, has this really isolated and sort of beautifully rendered and quite heartbreaking sensibility. And I think to get something across like that, which which is like, you know, years of processing, arguably, it just feels like they've found their home in these soundscapes that are really um, unique, you know, these kind of light bells and moving around while still being able to like charge it up and and, and, and go again. They're, They're like... It's like it's like they've put other like dad bands in a mech suit and they're able to like traverse into these new emotional pools they found where it's just like they've really grown, like grown their their soul to a point where they can just move and feel very and like kind of stride through it and I think it just knocks me out that they can do that with such again control and measured response um to it and i think that's just a um uh, uh, everything you i think i've come to it want from singers um especially while having all this kind of pageantry and and um calculated ability along with it so i think they're absolutely incredible i would definitely start with singles i think i started with a a, a different one before that but singles was the one where it was like oh this is these guys hitting their stride and i also cannot wait it was so perfectly timed too because they're having this new album come out in like a couple weeks so i'm like good to go i'm like so geared up and ready um so definitely check it out future island uh this is the last one that i think i feel confident and competent enough to talk about there's some other stuff i think um honorary mention would be like sarah morrison i think um 
and that, and that's it. No other honourable mentions. Um, but I, the last one I want to talk about is um, Anoni, and in particular the album um, "My My Back Was a Bridge for You to Cross." Um, I feel like this whole year I had more of a connection with whole albums rather than particular singles or particular um, songs. Like it was more like. Even even in the songs I really liked, I found it in the albums I really liked. Sorry, I found it very difficult to pick out particular songs that were favorites or standouts. It was less like single led, I guess. Um, and this album was one of the most um, absorbed and like locked in I was from kind of the get go. And I I like to listen to albums when I'm walking around or doing other things and um i was on such a, i was so on autopilot walking along just kind of being locked into to, to hearing this this album i i didn't know any of anoni or, or their previous albums and stuff but i think this there was just this this sledgehammer truth in in her lyricism where like you know it was kind of you sort of couldn't look away. It's almost got this kind of wail to it, like a um, like a siren, but for depression. You know, like <laughs> you're out at sea and you hear the songs like "Why Am I Alive Now" and "Sliver of Ice," and you have to go towards it and chase after it, but you uh, only to just be like, "Yeah, that's so true, bestie." Yeah, it's also really sad, um, and I think like it's got this really open and, and fertile sense of wondering where like it kind of just keeps I think that's more the production where it kind of just keeps moving you along and you're not really you kind of just have to absorb the things as you hear them because um you're needed elsewhere and you're on it's almost like a scary spiritual journey that it feels like the the, the character or the singer or the persona I'm not sure what you'd call it goes on and you're kind of just witnessing them go down these rabbit holes and get more and more more and less and less sorry payoff of of um emotional feeling and, and and as this need gets greater and greater um like sliver of ice it has this imagery of you know trying to get drops of ice just just or drops of water to, to stay alive and you really feel this very bedraggled uh uh urgent push to for life and for for empathy and understanding and and by the time you get to why am i alive now like it's such a um it's almost like this uh it's almost like this lounge act in purgatory or something you know you're sort of trapped just like in this just utter hopelessness and it's really incredible to to feel it and like why am i alive now like it kind of um the, the the final track after that which I'm so sorry I, I forget the, the name of it but it was you're sort of left with this feeling of there is nothing more than to live on behalf of the people that we've lost and to to take what we know into um a kind of future understanding and to to you know and not to to not shy away from the feeling of loss or to to act like it's okay um and you know to to be about things like you know from transphobia to to you know war, drone wars and killings in the middle east and and like you know modern colonialism like you just feel the weight of all of this stuff and it feels so picked over and passed through in this way that is um so elegantly raw um so it was a real day when I listened to this. I kind of felt the same way watching It's a Sin as well. Um, but uh, I just think it's, it's it's one of the most um, incredible pieces of music. That was favourite new discoveries of this year. Um, deep Cut Daniel, Deep Cut Delivery, Deep Cut, Deep Cut, Deep Cut. Um, and I really hope you enjoyed watching this. Um, and... I will reward you for your patience in watching me ramble, ramble, ramble um, by seeing the hat hair that you were once promised. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for for watching. Um, I've had I've had great time talking, so uh, I hope you enjoyed listening. And do 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 check out all the artists that I mentioned in this list. Uh, take it easy and have a wonderful new year.